Good morning, guys. I'm about to do a big harvesting morning. I've actually been out of town for the last few days. This is the first time I've ever left during summer. And honestly, it's so crazy how much, so much, like just how much can change in a few days um, during peak summer. I have so many more sunflowers blooming. There were so many things that ripened. I must say, I did walk around last night and water the garden when I got home. And uh, there was a cantaloupe that already detached. So I'm including this because I want to weigh how much harvest I get today. I have a ton of tomatoes. I think I'm going to have two more cantaloupes this morning as well. So um, there's there's a lot to harvest. And yeah, I'm including that because that was part of being gone. This is my being gone harvest. I have a ton of peppers. I'm going to be doing a ton today. I also need to finish braiding up my onions. I did a few on Friday before I left town and I still have quite a few to go. So I have a big harvesting morning. I need to put back my onion harvest. I know I need to do various things with some other things. I, I have a lot to do today, so I'm gonna go ahead and get to it. These, these plants are not, not looking happy. I will say with this Supremo variety, I am really impressed by the fruit, but I'm not really impressed um, really by the production overall of these plants they are giving me some beautiful fruit but yeah i don't know if i'll grow them again next year these ones here are the plum regals and they're definitely ripening a little bit behind the supremos but i'm also not that impressed with these ones either i also think i was talking to my husband so i used to have tomatoes before i really expanded the whole garden i had tomatoes pretty much over right near the shed. And that's one of the sunniest spots. This area here actually shades out just a little bit with this maple tree. So it's one of those things. Um, I think I might need to move tomatoes to the other side of the garden next year and see if that makes a difference because the last few years, I just really have not been impressed with my tomato production. This is this year is definitely better than last year. Last year really sucked as far as tomato production goes because we just had so much crazy heat um, before we even hit like mid July. So it just, I don't know, we'll see. I mean, I'm over here saying this and I'm getting a whole basket of tomatoes, but overall I just really haven't been that impressed with these varieties. But I also think if I were to move my tomatoes over to the opposite side of the garden that might make a really huge difference next year. So I'm already s trying to figure out little tweaks that I could change next year because it's just, I, again, I'm not that impressed with my tomato production and I'm not really sure what I would fully do because this area does shade out a good amount, but it's not too bad. This gets a good amount of sunlight. Um, I don't know. I don't know. There's a few I'll throw to the chickens. Where'd that other one go? I'm gonna go throw these ones to the chickens. There is a chance I might have enough okra to pickle okra. I don't know yet though. I still haven't had like a good amount to be able to pickle okra yet. So with cantaloupe, this is a pretty good example. This cantaloupe here is getting absolutely massive, but it's still not ready. The, the cantaloupes will really change to this like yellowy orange color and they will completely detach themselves from the vine. See, I didn't even do anything with that and it just detached itself. But this is another really beautiful cantaloupe. Oh my gosh. I grew this variety last year. This is Howl's Jumbo and I saved the seeds from one of my biggest cantaloupes last year. And so far I've been really impressed with how well these have been doing. So if you smell it, it smells so good, but I've, I, I've just really loved growing cantaloupe. It's been one of the easiest things and to be able to grow a really nice melon is amazing. I did harvest one of my sugar babies and I wasn't overall that impressed. It was very seedy, which I wasn't expecting um, to be completely honest. Ugh. Wow. So someone gave me the tip in the comments to use an S hook and yeah, definitely use an S hook. It is just so easy 
to be able to string up these melon cradles. So yeah, the cantaloupes will detach themselves from the vine. So when you grow vertically, it is really nice just to have that reassurance because there was a cantaloupe last year that was smaller and I did not cradle it and it ended up falling overnight and then something ended up getting it. I did now get my first two loofahs. So that's exciting. They're like the smallest loofahs I think I've ever grown, but they're ready to be ready to go. Let's see. That one hollowed itself out. The plant really hasn't been producing as much as it did last year. It's kind of reversed. So the honey nut squash didn't produce that much last summer but the loofah produced a ton and I feel like the loofah just now is starting to put on a lot more fruit and it might be a little late for a lot of the fruit um, I might have a lot of green loofah like I did last year as well um, but the honey nut squash has just been absolutely going crazy like I probably already have double the amount of honey nut squash than I had last year I probably have half the amount of loofahs to be honest but here are two of our first loofahs of 2023 and the seeds Well, I won't say my handful is a lot, but that is a typical first green bean harvest over here. I definitely need to dry some cayennes and paprikas today. I ended up harvesting some on Friday before I left, and I'm definitely, I'm gonna have a good amount today too. I got my first bell pepper on Friday, and it looks like we have a few more too. I'm actually thinking I might have enough stuff to make salsa and I might need to be making some salsa with some red serranos. Ooh, that looks beautiful. Ooh, it is beautiful. Ooh, another beautiful one. Could've gone maybe a itty bit longer, still good. I think I'm gonna leave that other one right here on a little bit longer. Good amount of peppers today, and I'm really, really happy about these bell peppers, that's for sure. Got a few cherry tomatoes. Do. All right, so I want to see what this corner did. It's been died back for a few weeks. This other area probably still has like another week or so, but I'm really curious to see if we got anything. And I wanted some potatoes for dinner. So let's stick up this corner and see what we got over here. The world's smallest potato. Um, another really small potato. Another kind of small potato. Ooh, that one's not bad. Just trying to be careful that I don't poke any of the potatoes. Did I really just get one potato from that one little area? There's no way. Ooh, yay. Here's a few. Nothing that big, but. Oh, that's another good one. Overall, not mad about it, but that was about from three plants in one of my shadier areas of that bed. So still about half of the harvest I got last summer. So I'm sure the other like one and three quarters of the bed, I'll get a decent amount, but I would like to have a few more potatoes bigger than this, but this will be a good amount for a dinner. All right, this is this morning's harvest. I am curious to see how much it weighs. Take the melons out. 
and weigh myself with the basket and then I'll just weigh everything in this basket and add everything together. Did I not, I don't think I brought, oh I did. I guess I could just kind of fill this basket with a few things to kind of save me some time. Melons, cucumbers. 16.2 pounds for all of that. All right, so now we have 13.6 potatoes, peppers, okra. I'm not gonna weigh the loofah. The loofah doesn't weigh anything. 36 pounds of food this morning, not shabby. So like I said, the onions are now fully cured. It's been four weeks and a few days since I harvested them. And when they are cured, they will be stiff to the touch. They'll have more of like a glossy covering. This will be completely dried up. So I like to string up my onions in a certain way. I will show you guys. I did make a little short on it, so you may have seen that, but I'll demonstrate here too, because I know not everyone sees everything. And I really like this method. It's really easy just to grab one off and go. This onion variety, I believe is supposed to be a pretty good storage uh, variety. I think it's supposed to last about six to eight months. So these onions are going to be used into fall and winter. And I'm really, really excited about this harvest. So when I string them up, I do about 15 to 18 per. Anything over that tends to get pretty heavy, especially when the size of onion is this big. So I don't want to go too heavy with them, but once I get them strung up, I transfer them to nails in my basement, which I'm not exactly sure if I have enough nails um, in my areas because last year I think I barely had enough so I might end up having to leave a few hung up in here and get nails <laughs> in the other areas down there so when doing this method you want to have a nail this is really going to help just hold everything in place and just make life a lot easier so you're going to string up your twine you want about three to four feet of twine total and then you are just gonna cut that and then give it a good double knot at the base. All right, so for your first onion, choose one that is pretty decent in size. This is going to be our base onion and you're gonna create a slip knot. So I like to shorten all of these to about six to eight inches. We will cut them even shorter and trim them up once we get everything braided, but go ahead and get the string just where it's not tangled and kind of loop that string around where you make your own little X and then you are going to just loop those circles together and then you're going to put your onion through this little circle here all the way down to the very base of the onion and kind of just tighten it there and then there you go you have your first onion. So every time you go to layer another onion, you, your string might end up twisting a little bit. Don't worry about that. That's going to actually help you out and kind of just have everything tightened down. So just make sure you're opening up the string, placing your onion in, and then just kind of wrapping around the additional stem part. And you're gonna have like three or four onions kind of sit on this onion here. So you wanna try to balance it out the best you can. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm like right here. Kind of twist that around. So I'm gonna open this up here, lay down my onion and then twist it around one of the other onions. All right. So now that you have like a really good base now, this will be even easier for you and you're just gonna keep working your way up through the string. So it's editing Brie, hi guys. So even though this method had worked in the past, I continue to braid up my entire harvest this day. And when I went downstairs to m move all of the onions down, I 
was messing with the ones I previously did on that Friday, like I mentioned earlier, and I noticed that the twine was slightly starting to unravel. So I ended up not hanging up everything like I did in the previous year. I really love this method. I love how clean it looks. I love that you can just really grab an onion and go, but I was not going to risk it and I didn't have any other twine on hand. I ended up remembering that I didn't use this twine um, and I thought this twine was going to work. I really thought I used this one last year, but then I remembered I had a thicker like cotton kitchen twine and this one was a pretty good twine, but apparently it's just not going to be strong enough. So I ended up doing all of this braiding to simply take it all down and put my wire rack there right to the right of me into the basement. And I put that downstairs and I ended up layering everything out in one layer and that is kind of how I am just going to store the onions for winter pretty much like I did the garlic this year as well so I honestly think this will be great especially with the airflow um, I really loved my little braids and if you want to do that method just make sure you have a strong twine I really loved it in the past and I will do it in the future it's just yeah the twine was the issue. I will also say the onions were a lot heavier this year since this was my best harvest year. I also did less onions on these braids than I did the previous year just for that factor. But again, the twine played an issue. The good harvest played an issue, which I'm not complaining about a good harvest, but just a little bit of a learning curve this year yet again. But then at least you know there is like different ways you can store your onions. There is multiple ways you can store your onions. There's not always one way to do anything. There's never one way to do anything. So always remember that if you run into the issue. The onions, you guys, have given me a run for my money since the very beginning. Like harvest day was just a mess. This day was a mess. So you know what? Maybe this was just my complete learning year with onions. Regardless, very, very happy about my harvest this year. So I have zero complaints. I did cut the tops down to about an inch and then just laid everything out really nice so it has good airflow. Every once in a while I'll come down and kind of just check the onions like this and if I feel any of them slightly going a bit softer, those will be the ones I use first. So even though that happened, I think it could have been a good thing because I ended up finding these two onions once I cut back the tops a bit and the whole insides were black. And if these were hanging out with the other onions, it probably would have gone back. So I'm sure that these actually didn't cure right even though they feel okay. I wanna cut these open and kind of see. This is the one onion though. It's just slightly soft on this one side. So this might be just an onion I use for dinner tonight. So I'm pretty sure it's okay, it's just this one little area is soft, so I think this might be one that maybe fell or something. I did all of that braiding for literally nothing. That took a little bit of time, but it's just crazy because that worked so well for me last year. It's just, uh, for years future, I'm probably just gonna have to make sure um, I get a stronger twine. Oh, well is this completely okay? Because if this is okay, I'm gonna leave the other one. Oh no, all right, so as you can see, check out all of that mold i was like there's no way that black is an okay thing peeling this one back a bit it looks like the stem didn't properly cure and it molded into the center of this onion very interesting either way though i'm really happy i only had a few that didn't cure correctly and overall, I'm really happy with the size of the harvest this year, so I cannot complain whatsoever. So as far as these peppers go, I do think I'm going to go ahead and make stuffed bell peppers tonight for dinner, which is really exciting. That will be a quick and easy dinner I can do. I do wanna go ahead and get these paprikas and cayennes into the freeze dryer. I feel like I've just been really just on repeat with peppers lately, telling you guys I'm either dehydrating or freeze drying the peppers, but it's literally just the time of year we're in where I have an abundance of peppers coming in at the moment. Um, so I think I'm gonna be leaving all of these jalapenos for today. I need to go run and get some cilantro from the grocery store. I really need to try to grow cilantro in my basement during peak summer. I, that's just one of those 
few crops that are really, it's really tricky. So I kind of just given up on it. I've tried for a few years now and I just know I can't grow it outside, but I even tried to do it inside and it died on me. So that is one of those things, but I need to get cilantro if I want to do any type of salsa and I'm going to have enough jalapenos to where if I want to do salsa, I could do salsa. I got my freeze dryer started downstairs. I'm gonna get these peppers all loaded up. Here are the trays. I'm gonna go put them in the freeze dryer. So I'm getting some rice washed up and then thrown into the instant pot for our stuffed peppers. I'm gonna throw it into the fridge while I'm doing some stuff out in the garden, but I am gonna go check on the chickens after I get this thrown in the Instant Pot because it's a really hot day and I'm sure I need to cool off their water or do something because it is warm. So I'm gonna go check on them, grab the eggs, probably come back in, do some few things. Bam. Currently feels like 103. I have just the pepper scraps here in some ice in my egg basket. Gonna throw some ice in the chicken's water and give them these peppers. I'm gonna rinse this out. Let's see how many eggs. I got today. Do, do, do. All right, we got seven. I'm gonna get dinner started. So I'm using a good amount from the garden tonight, other than ground beef, rice, cheese, and maybe like soy sauce, maybe a few other things. We're using majority um, stuff from the garden, maybe like half. Maybe half is from the garden. So I have bell peppers here that I'm gonna get washed up. And of course, this is what we're using to stuff for stuffed bell peppers. So I have five here. I ended up harvesting that one that I told you guys I really wasn't sure about. I harvested it because I knew I was gonna have enough stuffing to go ahead and do this. I also have a few jalapenos here that I'm gonna wash up with all that for the inside stuffing. Um, I'm also gonna go ahead and use up the onion that has the soft spot. So this is from dropping it and I can go ahead and get this used up. I can't really store it. I also have some garlic that I harvested from the garden as well. Um, I have some red chili flakes, paprika powder, and also onion powder. Other than that, maybe like some, maybe like oregano. Oh, I'm using also tomato sauce. I, tomato sauce. Uh, I don't have any from last year's harvest. Since last year's harvest of tomatoes was so small, I really did not get even close to having a year's worth. So uh, that's always been the goal. I really want to have a year's worth of tomato sauce and I have not succeeded yet. I don't know if this is going to be the year either because blight is going hard, but I love having a scrap bowl for the compost. Even if you're not a composter, Having a scrap bowl like this just beside you to where you're not worried about like your trash can is game changer. It's something I've been doing for probably like three or four years now and I love it. Yeah, this onion is absolutely perfect. I am seriously just so proud. Like I'm over here, I'm, I'm the one thing I'm really proud of this year is my onion harvest. Like I have tried so hard at growing really pretty beautiful onions and this was the first year I've actually succeeded. So I'm very excited about that. So let's see, where is this at? Oh yeah, it's like right here. Yeah, it still looks fine now, but you can tell it's kind of a little bit lighter in there. So it's definitely like a bruised onion. So I'm just gonna quarter this and then I'm going to get it ran through my little chopper here. So this chopper is pretty industrial, I know. Um, this is something I got gifted for my birthday this last year and I love it. So my sister has one, it's game changer. Like I've had one of the cheap plastic ones and it broke on me after about a year. I think this one's going to last me a while cause I got this for my birthday last year and it's amazing. I love it. So I found that a Pyrex measuring cup is like the only thing that really fits underneath it really well to 
where your onion doesn't go all over the place. So now I'm gonna get some garlic all peeled up and minced. This is my garlic grater. I get asked about this all the time. So I got this at a craft fair or like a women's fair, like pfft, seven, eight years ago now. And it's one of my favorite things. I believe you can find this exact one on Etsy. If I can find it, I will link it. I believe I've linked it in another video before, but the last time I went to go look for it, I couldn't find it. So we'll see what we can do. Okay, well, whatever garlic I chose today, it's probably like the easiest peeling garlic I have grown. With these garlic graters, you get the finest mints. It's so nice. All you do is take your clove and kind of just, I kind of go back and forth. Sometimes I go in a circle, just kind of depends. The part that kind of gets tough is when it gets to this part at the very end. Sometimes you might have like, a little extra skin on there you can take off, but it's like, what do you do with this? So I like to just kind of take my thumb and rub it into the plate. And that kind of helps just great that last little bit up. So I'm just going to keep doing that with all the cloves. I've been loving this strainer. My husband got it for me like two or three weeks ago and it's really, really sturdy. I wasn't sure if I was going to like something that was over the sink like this, but this has been so, so nice. All right, so I have some mozzarella and cheddar here that I'm also going to get grated up. I've always found that if you shred your own cheese, it always melts a lot better. So I always tend to shred my own. I also have been buying my cheese in bulk and I've been loving this cheese and having just a bunch of cheese on hand, it's been so nice. So I'm gonna try to slightly level out the bottom without hollowing it out, just so it can stand up nicely on its own. Do need to get my smaller knife here. Then I'm just going to kind of carve the top out like I'm carving a pumpkin. All right, so I have my big cast iron all like preheated. I like to preheat my cast iron in the oven. I'm going to go ahead and get these in here for the next mm, like 12 minutes. Start with 12 minutes. I might go up to 15. Then I'm gonna start browning this ground beef. All right, I'm gonna get my hands washed and everything this thrown away. So now that our ground beef has browned, I'm moving it just off to the sides and I'm gonna throw down the onion. I feel like this needs just a little bit of butter. All right, now that the onion's got some color, go ahead and get it all mixed. Throwing in the peppers and now also the garlic. And to this, I'm also going to add just a few dashes of tamari, which is kind of like a soy sauce. At this time, I'm also going to add some red chili flakes, paprika powder, and also oregano. Some of the freeze dried oregano we did the other week. Now I'm going to add the tomato sauce in and kind of put it on a lower setting while this can all bake in together. Adding in half the cheese into here. The other half will be for topping. Mmm. So the pre-cooking kind of just helps cook the pepper a little bit so it's not as crunchy and everything and you're not cooking all of this that much longer. All right, 350 for 15 more minutes. Peppers are done. But one thing I'm gonna do is move the oven rack up to closer to the top here. And I'm gonna turn on the broil. 
All right, then we're gonna put that in for a few minutes just to crisp up the cheese a bit. Don't those look so good? I will see you guys in a few. I'm going to go eat. Man, right as I walk over here, are you kidding me? I was about to say, it's our daily moment. We will look for squash bugs. Ugh. Got it. I was really, um, oh my gosh, here's another one. I was really um, nervous about leaving for a few days just because the squash bugs, it's been like an every other day thing. So yesterday I got back and I didn't see anything initially. Came out last night and I ended up finding eight adults and a few different leaves that had eggs. I honestly can't believe I just found a, two adults like that back to back. I, I really like just using soapy water. I didn't use, uh, oh, there's a ladybug, how exciting. Um, I really, uh, oh, wow, okay, there's a few. And I just found eggs. Got them. All right, so we got four adults so far. And now I just found my first cluster of eggs. Oh, and I just found another cluster of eggs. So, oh, and there's two clusters on that. Jeez, they have been busy today. Gosh. We don't have the soapy water. I don't know if I ever got onto that. Um. I, they were just trying to fly out and I couldn't focus on finding them. So soapy water for the wind. Found three more clusters of eggs. I didn't find any more adults though. I was watering over here and found three more clusters of eggs and one more adult. Look at that cluster. Ladybug. Getting away for a few days really makes me feel refreshed going into August, I'm not gonna lie. July was very, very busy, and I know August is going to be pretty busy as well, so those are the two really, really busy months from here. <laughs> so I, I expect it to still be pretty busy here in August, but just stepping away for two full days and not being in this space, I think just mentally, like I was just doing so much, like there's always something to do and you're never gonna get it all done most of the time. So it's just one of those things, like I mentally probably needed a refresh and I didn't really realize it. So it was really nice and I'm feeling really good being back and honestly, the garden was fine. I had bad anxiety about that. I'm sure if I were to leave like for like a week or something, I would, definitely be nervous uh, especially if I left like at the end of the July when the heat was as strong as it currently is it still feels like 102 and it's almost eight o'clock I think like and this is how it's been for all last week and then for like the next four or five days like we have highs of 105 so I'm sure I feel like it's gonna be even higher than that over the next few days um, I am of course just dealing with like die off from like blight and I really need to go around and actually deadhead a few things so before like the Sun goes down down I'm really gonna I think I'm gonna go around and deadhead a few flowers. I also need to let Khaleesi out. Poor girl. She didn't get to go outside as much over the last like few days when I was gone and she's just been asking me and begging me and she's just been so thankful so I'm gonna let her out too. If you didn't know, zinnia seeds are really easy to collect. Just wait until the flower has died back on the plant and then I'm not gonna do it right now because all the seeds would be messed up but just mess it up and then you got your your zinnia seeds. This plant has been absolutely gorgeous. So I definitely wanna save a few more seeds from it. I already have saved a handful. 
This yarrow has been going to seed for some time too and it's been shaking everywhere. So I'm sure I'm gonna have some volunteer yarrow too, but I am gonna save some of these seeds. Come here, girly. Oh, hi, hi. Well, look you there. A squirrel totally told on himself. Hey, girls. Ladies, this way. This way. This way. Go. I'm gonna sift through their coop area before going in. I knew if I would look one more time, I would find one, and I just found three. Actually four. <sighs> Two more. Oh, here's another one. Oh, here's another one. I really didn't think I was gonna find that many just doing one more stop before going in, especially because I spent like 35, 40 minutes over here. But either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed spending the day with me as I just kind of did various things to kind of catch back up on life after leaving town. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye.